In this lesson, we're going to be talking about thermostats. Now, thermostats are what we consider an operating control. Operating controls are designed to turn the equipment on and off. They don't provide a level of safety in this case. And they also don't do, they're not a load, so they're not actually doing work. It is a switching device. So it's considered one of the most basic control devices for air conditioning or refrigeration system. Customer turns it down system should come on. Now, there's a difference between the thermostats that are found in refrigeration and the thermostats that are found in air conditioning. In most air conditioning systems, our, our thermostats are 24 volts. In refrigeration systems, the thermostats actually are line voltage and directly control, in most cases, the compressor and the condenser fan as well as some other controls that are in there. But in refrigeration systems, you have to remember that they operate on and off of 120 volts or sometimes 240 volts. In some refrigeration systems, pressure switches are also being used in place of a thermostat based on the temperatures being that are looking to be achieved. Now we're going to talk about pressure switches in, in another presentation. The wiring of the line voltage thermostats has to be done according to local electrical codes. The thermostat operates on electric operates the electrical loads directly or through line voltage operating control. Now, the electrical code is NFPA 70A and you actually or 70 and you have to follow whatever local version it is all junctions on control on line voltage have to be inside a metal um, junction box that's covered so stats are two state devices by what i mean by that is they're either on or off okay we look at the schematic symbols of our devices okay specifically we're worried about the cooling you notice that it will close on temperature rise. Pressure switches again, okay, this one will close on temperature rise, open on pressure fall. Okay, high pressure switch opens on pressure rise, closes on pressure fall. Okay, so this, the two bottom ones are going to be the ones you see used in refrigeration systems for temperature control. The thermostat is a switching device. All it does is pass power from one side of the switch to another. It doesn't use power. So you, if you take a voltage reading across a thermostat, you should never have a voltage drop. If it's closed, it acts as a closed switch and it should have zero volts. If it's open, it acts as an open switch and it should have 120 volts. It is one of the most frequently changing devices in the HVAC industry. We started off with very basic manual control thermostats. They've gone up now to digital thermostats and remote control using your phone or iPads or even um, sometimes automated from the internet. But they all do the same thing. They turn it on and they turn it off at the proper temperature. If using a pressure switch for a thermostat, it turns off based on a pressure. The basic function of the thermostat is to respond to a change in temperature by opening or closing a switch. Okay, thermostats can be line voltage, control voltage, or digital voltage. Line voltage are most often used in electric heat applications as well as refrigeration. Control voltage thermostats are used mainly in residential or small office applications. These are examples of the various thermostats you might see around there. Okay, the top left-hand corner, that's strictly for heating and air conditioning. Top right, strictly for heating and air conditioning. The bottom, two, the bottom two pictures there, they're the remote bulbs, and you're going to see them most often in refrigeration. They're 120 volt line voltage. Okay, there are now three types of sensing elements that are used in thermostats. The controlling part of the thermostat is the part that moves or causes the contacts to close when, a temperature, when the thermostat senses a change in temperature. First one is the bimetal, okay? The bimetal strip is two dissimilar metals, that's what the green and red is, two dissimilar metals that are sort of welded together. The different metals expand and contract at different rates, so the whole thing shifts position based on temperature, okay, it swings one way or another.
When heated or cooled, they bend and move the contacts closer together or further apart. These are the bimetal elements that you'll most likely see. Okay, you have cantilever. That's sort of like a springboard of a diving board. It goes up or down based on the end. You have a U-shaped. It will expand and contract. And you have the spiral, okay, that will actually move the entire spiral and thus make it bigger or smaller. The movement of the metal and the contacts can move a mercury bulb or bring ma a magnet on the contacts together. The thermostat must have a way of making a good connection with the contact. This is called snap acting. They snap together and snap apart. This is an example of the next type of controlling element, the remote bulb. It has a bulb that's filled with a liquid or gas. The liquid and gas expand and can travel down a capillary tube. The expanded material puts pressure on a diaphragm and internally and it either opens or closes a set of contacts. Now there are a few things that you do have to remember about this one. Okay, first of all, you see how this is nicely coiled? If you do not use the whole coil, make sure it's, you put it in a spot where the coil can't get kinked. Okay, so unbend gently what you need to, again, in a, in a circular manner. Then put some wire ties around these so that over the years of being installed, no one kinks this coil because if any of this tubing gets kinked, the thermostat will not work. Then the, then the final type of thermostat we have, controlling element, is the solid state. Okay, the solid state is where everything's going. So the other thermostats you have are slowly being replaced. Solid state is used in most digital or programmable thermostats. Okay, it uses a material that changes resistance based on temperature. Knowing the resistance, the thermostat can judge and display the correct temperature. Okay, it's a longer, it has a longer and more accurate lifespan. There's no moving parts in these things. And again, we can connect them to computers and other output mechanisms. We can use them on alarms and just do so much more with them. That's why these are moving. That's why everything's moving to solid state. So the basic thing is, remember we have, that we want to get across here is, you have three types of sensing elements, okay? You have the bimetal, you have the remote bulb, and you have the solid state. The bimetal has a snap acting with a magnet on the contacts that pull them together and keep them together so they don't bounce around and cause sparking. The um, the remote bulb, just be careful and don't bend that tube. Okay, that's the remote bulb is what you're going to see most frequently in refrigeration at this point. And the solid state, it's where we're going. But they are still more expensive at this time. But you're going to see more and more going to the solid state.